Hey guys, guys. Do an audio check. Let's see you guys can hear me. Can you hear me? Making sure that my my earpiece works, guys. <laughs> yep, everything works, right? <clears throat> cool, 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 guys. Oh, what a long day, huh? Dude, these markets are freaking brutal. Not easy at all. Not easy, man. The, the key is to just to avoid the hot chicks, man. The hot plays, the... The crazy shit. Stick to your process. Stick to your process, man. That that is the key. Uh, we get greedy. We want to start attacking these. We think it's gonna go. It's like whoa! It's up so much. It has it has to go down. And you know what that what happens, man? It doesn't have to do shit, right? It does not have to do anything. Um, that's why people get stuck. The hardest part, before I start, I just want to say the hardest part about about <clears throat> trading is not trading. I'll repeat that, guys. The hardest part about not, the hardest part about trading is not trading. Being able to just do nothing. That, to me, is the hardest thing to do, man. Not to place a trade, even though you, you are so... I mean, you're, it's just like you're so thirsty for that trade. And he's like, oh, my God, it's up 500%. It has to go down. It doesn't have to do anything, right? So the hardest part about trading is actually not trading. And today is a prime example. ELTK, oh, my God. Thank God we didn't have any locates. If you had locates, you, you would blow up, man. You would basically mortgage your car, your house. It's like no way it can go up. No way it can go up. It's like how can a stock go from two dollars to eight fifty? It's just I mean, this is small caps. This is what we trade. And if you are disciplined, man, I mean, going along this, I mean, I, in hindsight, it's like why didn't I go along? It's like the moment you go along, it's like, dude, the bottom falls out. So it's so hard to predict. These things move so. It does. It, dude. It, the, 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 take a look at this. There is just, I mean, dude, it, it rips a point fifty from nowhere. It defies all logic. The only thing you can go by is the support lines. 650 support line has been supported all day long. You see that, guys? But man, when it comes down, it's so scary. You think it's going to break. So what you do is, if you want to, you go long. But you put a stop, like a 20 cent stop, 15 cent stop to make sure you don't get jacked. That's the only way you can play these. If you, if you chase this up here, the bottom falls out. You have to wait for it to come to you. If you do chase, make sure you sell right away if it goes against you. And that's why trading these are so difficult. But at the end of the day, the lines tell the whole story, right guys? Look at this. 650 supported all day long, man. In hindsight, if you just bought the 650 line, you're set all day long. And what you do is you sell when 620 breaches, but then 650 to six bucks is another support here. This has never been tested all day. So let's see tomorrow if that's been tested. The VWAP for this is 568. So 568 is around here. So the VWAP lines up with this notch. And this is why I love looking at line charts, because line charts show you a lot. I do also have candlesticks and all sorts of charts, guys. This is just one of the charts. But as you can tell, the notches match up to the VWAP. The notches show you all the support spots. So all, so in hindsight, you know, this, this is what I'm doing. I'm looking, even though I don't trade this, I'm looking at this to see how I can benefit for the next time. And in my opinion, this is why I use line charts. I candles are just too confusing for me. Um, I like to see exactly where, and these are minute charts, guys. 
I mean, look at this, 650 live all day. And this was at noon, 1230, one o'clock. So this is all hindsight bullshit. I hate doing line uh, hindsight because, um, dude, any idiot can come here and tell you what you should do after the fact. I, I, I mean, you know what you should do, guys? You should have bought here. <laughs> if I'm doing a recap and I didn't trade the stock, you should have bought here. This is obvious, guys. Didn't you see this obvious spot? You should have went here and bought. Because look at this, man. Because it dipped down. It was supported through here. You should have bought here. And nope, you shouldn't sell here. Nope, you shouldn't sell here because you knew it was going to go back up here. See, it's all bullshit. You see what I'm saying, guys? You, you see how I hate people who go after the facts and start doing summaries, recaps of shit they didn't trade. I mean, oh, any idiot can tell me I should have bought here and sold here. How is that going to help you? And so... The, the, this stock basically for my guys in MIC, I said, dude, we're lucky that there's no shorts on this thing, dude. You would die. There's just no. So the way that we save ourselves is with rules. And so our rule says the zombie rule at 1030. You do not freaking short past 1030. And take a look at the trap. Okay, I'm going to expand this out. It's freaking scary how accurate this 1030 rule is. 1030 on the dot is the freaking trap, dude. This was at, if you had click on this, this is $4.82. $4.82. It went all the way up to 680 and it dropped two points. Dropped two points. And people think it's over. So they're slamming this at the zombie hour. 10.30, guys. 10.30. Take a look at that. I mean, after a while, you start to think, this is not a coincidence. This is this rule has something going for it, right, guys? It trapped, dude. Instantaneously at 10.30. I keep telling my guys, that's why in the room we have an alarm. We, we, we have what's called the MIC secretary, which reminds us 10.30, zombie rule. Everybody be careful. Everybody be careful. So if you're freaking hammering this thing at 1030 and chasing it down, you've just been killed. And that's, that's why these rules, I mean, these rules are developed from years of me getting trapped. <laughs> I don't just fucking make these rules up. I experienced these rules, guys. I, I, I've, I've lost a lot of money because I'm thinking, because I'm, I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? So the only way you can understand is if you have experience. And you've fucking taken losses, and then you look back and you go, "Holy crap!" You know, then you determine why. Um, I don't want you guys to lose to discover all these rules. And that's why we, you know, that's why I'm helping people with MIC. It's like, dude, this one rule alone saves a ton of people money. <laughs> Other chat room guys are leaving at ten thirty too. <laughs> they're ten thirty. They they fucking close shop. I don't, I'm not going to mention who, but you know, <laughs> you know, I, I hear it all the time. It's like, oh, ten thirty, I'm done. I mean, it, it's a smart thing to do. Why mess around? But they don't realize that uh, for the long side trader, if they're long, um, ten thirty rule is a good rule, man. If you're a long side trader, I'd be buying shit up at ten thirty <laughs> just to see if it fucking zombies up. That's what I would do. Put a stop order in, you know, just in case. But dude, these are overly rotated stocks, super low float, like a million uh, float, one point three million float or something really small. It traded. 35 million today. 30 time rotation, dude. 30 freaking time rotation. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good chance it's got a zombie and it did zombie. Fucking zombie all day long. The hard part is fucking at the end of the day, you, you realize, oh, you should have been long. But it's just so hard to long these because some of these are just fall down. That's why you always have to set hard stops. That's why you always have to have these rules. You know, sometimes the best rule is just not to touch these. These are just totally unpredictable. But... You know, that's trading, man. Once you develop the process around this, work your process. Don't deviate from your process. All right, so that's pretty much the summary. Um, S-O-L-Y, the sucker, man. It ran up, it trapped. It's just another one of these really difficult stocks to trade. Just take it off your list. Um, there are easier stocks to trade. I'll give you an example. 
stocks that have a good pattern, four dollars, every time it hit four dollars, it would go down. So I shorted every time it hit four bucks. And I just took the wash, I took the wash. Uh, VLRX, same, same type of thing. I posted these charts on, uh, I've actually lost on this. I posted in the room that I lost on this, so the guys in the room know. Um, but anyways, the reason I want to show this, uh, let me see, let me show, let me bring up this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a Q and A after this, so uh, save your questions and then we will answer any questions. So I wanted to do a retrospect because it's been a, you know, um, I don't really talk much about the past because to me the past is the past. I don't talk about my old P and Ls because it doesn't really matter to me now. Old P and Ls meaningless is what I do. Um, from here on out, right? Um, but this is a remarkable trade, and I want to go through this because this is the mindset that you guys, I want to share with you guys because there's a lot of things you can learn from this. But before that, I gotta take another beer. <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> Once again, if you stick to the process, you make money. You deviate from the process, you lose money. I lost money on SOLY because I, I fucking, I was going for the Grand Slam. I, I, I should have, could have covered, but then I held it and it squeezed up freaking five points on me, you know? <clears throat> so this is where I lost. <clears throat> I thought, I was hoping this thing will break under here. So when it went up, it went so fast, man. It got me. But you know, it's manageable loss. I lost like 5,000, 4,000. So I mean, it's not a giant loss. For me, it's very manageable. So and so I'm okay. Made money elsewhere. But um, let's get back to this, guys. So those who don't know, I, I back in the day, I, I was a crazy maniac. <laughs> I, I would trade very large sizes for all this. Uh, I've gotten, so my biggest size on this was probably 500,000 shares at five bucks. So I, I was, I mean, 500,000 shares is a big, so I mean, I just don't go at 5,000 shares, right? So I call it leveling up. So I want to talk to you about that. It's the mindset of this. Um, I always like to use this phrase. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Luck. People always think like, you know, they, they blame luck about everything. They make money. Oh, it's a lucky trade. Um, you lose money. Oh, I just got unlucky. But you know what luck is? Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Uh, that FN, FNMA trade, you can call luck. Call anything you want. Uh, it is definitely luck. You need everything to go right to do these type of trades, right? Like these monster trades. Uh, for those who don't know, I, it's in the I, it's in my interview, uh, Chat with Traders from Modern Rock and also Momo Traders book. And if you come to the August 17th live trading seminar, I will show you the PL. <laughs> it's on my phone. Uh, I don't want to post it because I don't, I don't want any trolls to get it, get it. But if you come to there, I will, I will show it to you. Remind me, I will show it to you. It's a very motivating thing. And it's, people think, oh, you only had that one trade. Nah, dude, it's just, you don't just wake up and make like almost two million bucks, right, in, one, in four hours. There's a leveling up to that point. That whole week I was setting up for that trade. So let's take a look. So I'm just talking about mindset, okay? And, and luck, how you make your own luck. So take a look at this. This is way back in 2013, guys, May 2013. This is a five day chart. So you notice it started at $2, under $2, 180, and ran all the way up to $5. So during the week, I was long the stock, long, long, long. There's no reason to short it. It never, so I had a rule. My rule was uh, as long as it stayed green on the day they're working that stock, as long as it's green. So I went long every day, I, I held stuff overnight. And so I would hold like 20,000 shares and I'm shitting myself. <laughs> it's, it's funny because I'm like, yeah, I'm holding 20,000 shares, which is only $50,000 position, you know, not that bad. So, so I would, so basically I'm ramping. So up until, so I'm making like a hundred grand each day, right? 
So people think, oh, you, you've only, you know, you went all in, you got lucky. No, dude, it's a progression. I was building my size up for the past, I don't know how long I trade, like over 10 years, right? 10 years of trading to get to this level. So, I mean, along the, so you have to get comfortable with holding size. So I, this is not me trying to brag anything. It's just trying to tell you how to level up and the mindset. You don't wake up one day and start trading 1,000 shares. Maybe you do. Maybe you have a big account. You can do that. Some people start with 200 shares and learn and get comfortable. That's the right way to level up. When I started trading, guys, I only traded $3,000 positions, 3,000. So a stock like this, a $2 stock, I would be in maybe 2,500 shares. Okay, that's the sort of stuff I would train. So I mean, that's that's the level I started. So I, I mean, I didn't have a big account. So it's a leveling up process, okay? And so you, you get comfortable. So my, my whole point is this, is this is this is the path that, you know, who knows? I never thought I was gonna wake up and make this kind of money. And take a look at this. Every day the stock was flat. There was no opportunity to actually size up and make these huge moves. It was only at the end where it did a parabolic. And so I've been training these parabolic type of setups for a long time. I know that it's gonna parabolic and then it slows up. And so I'm gonna give you a tip on how to, to top, how to top tick. Okay, so this is what I was known for back in the day, being able to top tick and bottom tick. And I'll tell you how I know. When a stock runs, it speeds up. Okay, it gets faster and faster and faster. The moment it reaches the top, it actually slows down. Okay, and this is the only time I, I read tape, guys. Okay, this is the only time I read tape. I read tape by looking at this. I don't look at the, the level two, I look at the prints. I look at the prints. Right now, there's no nothing printing. There's zero, I call it zero velocity. But when it parabolics, you will see the prints go crazy. It speeds up, first it's slow like this, and then it ramps up. So take a look at that next time. Next time a stock moves, take a look at the speed at which they're printing the prints. That's how I could gauge the top or the bottom, okay? So what happens is this. When a stock moves up, it starts to print, and then at the top, it actually slows down. Imagine this, imagine a car. Imagine you're driving a car as fast as you can, but then you have to turn around, make a U-turn. You have to stop. So the velocity goes from a positive velocity, like your speed of your car, to negative, backwards. So when you go from 60 miles per hour to reverse, it has to go through zero, right guys? You have to slow down. So when it starts to slow down, when the prints, when the, it prints, and it slows down, that's when you know it's close to the top, okay? And then I look at, so how do I gauge this? You look at the historical chart. I look at the one year to two years, whatever. And so then, you know, you put everything together. So you already know the resistance lines and all that. So I've been doing this for a long time and I've, now I'm teaching you guys to do it. So this is the same principles, okay? So it speeds up and then all of a sudden it's, it slows down. The rate at which the prints, the time and sales slows down. That's what I knew. And so then when I saw it slow down, and then I saw the offers, which is the, the people selling, there are more sellers than buyers. So right now there's kind of even, right? A thousand seller. But so in the beginning, it runs up. You see hell, uh, you, you see a ton of buys. These are all buys, not many sellers. At the top, you'll see a ton of sellers less buyer, that's when I knew. And that's when I just fucking, just slammed this thing, okay? So I probably had 100, I've had, I think I had like 200,000 shares long on this stock. So I had 200,000 shares long on this stock. And then at the top, I slammed it for like 300,000 shares or some shit. So, so I sold an aggregate of like 500,000 shares at the top. So I was short 300,000 shares. <laughs> yep, 300,000 shares, I rolled this shit all the way down. And same same type of velocity. I'm reading the tape. I'm looking at the speed at which it's tanking. I'm it's tanking. There's no reason for me to get out. I got all out. I, I mean, I was fortunate. I got all out at 
at the dead bottom. I covered at the dead bottom. 300,000 shares at the dead bottom. I overcovered, so then I net long again, around 250,000 shares. So when I covered, I covered 500,000 shares here. Yeah, so I shorted like 2.5 million bucks here and then I covered like a million dollars here. So, and then I made this whole thing up. So, so at the end of the day, I, I did well. But, I didn't even think about the P&L guys. I didn't think about anything. You know what I thought about? I thought about the process. What is my process that got me to this level, right? The process was um, putting everything together. That, this is the whole luck thing. I prepared for this entire trade my entire life. It, you know, I, you don't just wake up and make this. I've, I've had a lot of $100,000 days. I've had $250,000 days. So, I mean, so I got used to it. Um, it's nice. Uh, I was I was trading very big, so I was averaging a ton of you know. But it didn't matter. My whole point is, it's it's the process of leveling up, and you know it's it's basically it's when opportunity meets preparation. If I was not prepared for that trade, I would never make that trade. Right? You have to be. You have to prepare. And same thing with trading and life. And you start. Somewhere, guys. I, I started with trading. Dude, I was making $3 a day um, off of uh, $3,000 positions. So I would have maybe five positions. Each position was uh, uh, $3,000 or $5,000. So I had a small account. But then each one of those positions overnight made me like 200 bucks. So if I had five of those positions, that's $1,000. So, so for me, so the way I started to do my, my system was because... I've got my ass beat because I was always all in on one stock. So instead of going all in, I diversified. And by diversifying, I was more nimble. I was able to take the meat of the move. I was able to, you know, not wait for the top or bottom, okay? To, to make money, you don't need to have the top or bottom. Just take the meat over and over, be consistent about it, and then the money adds up. I always lose when I try to I, when I go into the day thinking I'm gonna bank because I force trades. Uh, the entire week I was actually scared, so I never thought I was gonna bank. I thought I was like, "Holy fuck! Please don't let me lose," because I was in so big of a position. If if I was wrong, I, I'm dead. But I was not scared because I built my cushion the entire week. You know, I probably I was up like a couple hundred thousand dollars that week, right? Before that day. So I was like, fuck it. I went to fucking, you know. But I, I didn't just buy five hundred thousand shares at the open. I added to my position. So that I call that adding to a winner. And I kept adding and adding and adding. There's no reason to sell. It was fortunate, it was just straight up, dude. It was just fucking straight up. And it's like, yeah, it's a one in a million trade. Where it goes straight up, I was able to get out. Short and it went straight down. I've never seen a trade like that again. Right now, it's very choppy, everything. So, it was, yes, it's a one in a lifetime lucky ass trade, but it was not luck. It was the entire setup. So, you know, you know what that happened that day? That day, it, that was basically my bucket list trade. Meaning, fuck, dude, I've always wanted to, you know, make that, but it wasn't the money. It was more of a like like playing video game was like an achievement, right, guys? It's like you unlock the achievement. So, and the achievement was done across a decade. It wasn't just that one day. You build up your rules. You build up your your bankroll. You have to level up intelligently. I had friends back in the day that did prop trading, and they, dude, they were swinging up and down like twenty thousand dollars. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I, here I am making my thousand dollars a day, three thousand dollars a day. You know, and, and I'm like, and they, they, they call me a piker. They call me all sorts of shit that the trolls call me. Now, it's the same thing. Nothing has changed. You know, they, they, I, they didn't know. I was like, dude, I was fucking making money every day. Um, waiting for that opportunity. Waiting for the opportunity came. And then when the opportunity came, I fucking kicked ass. Whereas those other guys were swinging up and down, losing 20 grand here, making 30 grand, losing 50 grand. And at the end of the day, where are they now? You know, one of, one of the guys I know is driving Uber, and he was fucking swinging up and down fifty thousand dollars a day. Um, the same principles apply today, man. It's just a different market. Is it? I'm telling you, it's tougher now. It's tougher. 
No one's ever said it's easier. Anybody that says it's easier is incorrect. The reason it's tougher because now it's electronic and you're fighting against computers. But the system can still be beat. We have people in the room making consistent money every day. You just have you just basically have to have the discipline to do, keep doing that. Okay. Um, I don't like really talk about this trade because it might people. You know, to be honest, dude, I was very depressed after that because. I'm like, where to next? I've hit all these achievements for myself. Um, it was really not, not about the money. I mean, I had no money. It's like I can make money every day on that, right? Um, it was more like, fuck, holy shit. Now what? Um, after that, I became very depressed because my entire life, I thought, you know, I, you guys all know my story, right? I was an immigrant and all that. I, I thought like, shit, man, money's going to make me happy and all that. But that was a very depressing time in my life. And that's how, you know, I don't want to get into it, but that, that's the backstory on how MIC was formed. So for many years, I left Twitter because I was very bored. I was helping people. I was getting trolled. I was like, after all, I was like, no, worth it. It's like, you know, I, I was very depressed about life, about everything. And it was not money related. It was, it was more of a satisfaction of, fuck, dude, now what? Imagine you could buy anything you want. Imagine you could buy whatever the fuck you want. Um, that's why you have these guys being a philanthropist. It's not like I'm a rich guy, right? I mean, I'm nowhere near those guys. But for me, a simple guy who doesn't really give a fuck about cars or any of that kind of shit, it's like, what the fuck, dude? I wear, you know, $10 t-shirt. So for me, it was like, fuck, dude, it's, it's boring. I want to experience it with friends or family, all that. And so I never really taught anybody back then. Uh, people ask me to teach them. I created the Trading Fish. A lot of you guys learned from the Trading Fish. Uh, I helped friends start chat rooms. Um, but I've never really taught anybody. That's because to, in my – so if you, if you take a look at my Twitter, I, I joined in 2009. My first tweet wasn't until like 2014, 2013. So it's like four or five years since I actually tweeted because I, I honestly didn't think like I was ready to teach anybody. Like how can I teach someone my system when to me it was like, shit, man, I, I don't even know if, if anybody can do my system except myself, right? I've taught one guy. That guy made $8,000 – million. Um, we talked about that before. So he made a million dollars on FMA that day. And that's the only – that was the competitor I had. Um, if it was not for him, I would probably make $2.5 because I couldn't feel. He, I've, I've lost like – on slippage alone like $200,000. Slippage meaning like fuck. I press sell on a three thousand dollar order and I can't fucking fill shit like that. So I probably lost two hundred thousand dollars throughout the day on slippage. Um, and so you know, like, dude, after a while, you have to find a bigger meeting to keep going. So for me, my whole life, my meeting was never about money. It was more about respect because I, I mean, I came over. Because of the Vietnam War and during that time, there's a lot of racism, guys. Uh, people did not see any Asians back then. They, they, didn't, they were scared of Asians. They thought we were communists and all that stuff. So, I mean, I, I grew up with a lot of adversity. So my, my goal was never money. It was more of a respect thing, um, which made me very sad. Because, But then, then when I finally reached out, I was like, fuck, dude, it was all for nothing. But one good thing was it helped my family. I helped my family out. So, so my, my advice to you is you have to find a deeper meaning than money to make it work, guys. Because, man, if, if it's just purely money, you can go make money somewhere else. Trading is very, very difficult mentally. Because, man, you, I wake up and I'm up like a couple thousand bucks uh, within like a minute, two minutes, right? Uh, 10 minutes by 10, like within half an hour, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do for the rest of the day? So the hardest part is being to relate that to something so that you don't just end up over trading the entire day and losing everything because money comes and goes very fast in trading guys. And so I wanted to teach you guys because before you, before you get to this level, in order to get to this level, you need to be able to, to control yourself. I always say it's very easy to make money. Very easy to make money. It's very difficult to keep money. It is very difficult to keep the money that you make. 
Um, you can make the money very quick, but as you know, as man, if, if you can lose it back in a heartbeat, right? And so you have to, if you cannot control yourself with small size, small money, how can you control yourself with large size? And so if you want to be a better trader, in my opinion, it's not the size, scale back, man. You relate it to something, relate it to something that is more meaningful than money. And that's why we, you know, that's why I, I love this after hours channel that we have with FIC. That came actually as an afterthought. I never planned it, but it just turned into a lounge where everybody started helping each other. And so I come, and we all come to to love each other because we're, we're there helping each other every day. And, and that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps a lot of time these people going. Like when I'm losing, you know, I'm like, fuck, I need, I need a motivation, a reason to come back. And, you know, besides myself, right? And so, so you, you basically, so the end of the day is this, guys. You find a reason to keep going. And the reason is not money. Okay, the reason is not money. You, you, you find a support system. You just need something. Uh, I don't want to, this is sound hokey pokey, but, you know, I mean, I'm not that kind of guy, but shit, man. I'm, I'm thinking back on how I got to where I got to today. I never really expected this. Seriously, I never thought in my life that this would happen. I never thought we'd start MIC. I never thought we'd have a thousand members by, we're not even a year yet. Uh, to be honest, I was like, fuck, dude. I started MIC to save myself. I was very depressed. I was drinking a lot. I was just, same thing as Alex, man. I was like, fuck, dude. I didn't work for like two years. Um, I probably spent millions of dollars on just giving it away to people, hanging out. Um, no, I didn't really give a damn. I, I maybe I think I was on a suicidal path. I just didn't know it, drinking myself to death. Maybe who knows? Um, people think I'm drunk all the time. I'm not drunk all the time. Trust me. Um, I for the longest time I didn't miss work for years. Um, so I'm just passing back my knowledge now. And so today, you know, like today, it's it's kind of like a bittersweet day. Because I'm like, holy crap, um, today's the anniversary of that day. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, dude, that day was so long ago. And I remember how unhappy I was when it happened because who am I going to tell? Who am I fucking tell? I told some friends and for the rest of their my life or my relationship with them, I, they never paid a single dollar again. So they treated me very differently. They, they thought money was easy and they're like, why, why is Bao making me pay for things? And so it was really bad, guys. Um, believe it or not, money is not happiness. You just need enough money. Okay, so they, they say this. They say happiness is somewhere in between too much and too little. Happiness is somewhere between too much and too little. Think about that. This is like a balance in life and all that. So now, you know, to be honest, like, Dude, I look forward to waking up so that I find pleasure in trading because I'm not trading for money. Of course, it's money aspect. Of course, I wouldn't be trading for free, but but you still say, but that's not the sole reason. I trade so I can learn stuff, so teach. Um, it's very difficult to teach around a process to for the masses because, like, I know what. I do, but imagine how do I put it down on to a piece of paper, a process to teach you what to do. And I mean, there's a lot of complexities in this. So you have to, I don't want to say the word dummy down, but you have to dumb it down to something really simple that you can teach to my grandparents, to my mom. Yeah, I don't know anything. So that is the difficulty in trading. And that's why a lot of these guys don't understand in my opinion. They, they think, Holy fuck, Bao was doing some simple ass line shit. Everyone does that shit. Everyone does resistance support. Do they? I don't think everybody does it. They know about it, but they think it doesn't work. They think it's too simplistic, so it doesn't work. But when I look back at my trades, man, fuck, I've been using these fucking line charts forever. I never even used VWAP, to be honest. I didn't fucking hear about this VWAP shit until all the Twitter traders started talking about VWAP. And then I'm like, holy fuck, there's a VWAP? <laughs> That's how old school I am. I swear, I never used fucking VWAP when I fucking made that million dollar trade. When I made, you know, like fucking all those money back in the day, I never, I never used VWAP. You know what I did? I used my lines, to be honest. I didn't even know what they were called. 
I didn't even know they were called fucking pivot lines, to be honest. I'm like, these lines were automatically strung onto my chart. That's how stupid it was, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you call it luck, you call it whatever, but that's, that's why I've been using the same charting program forever. But then when I started to do MIC, I had to sit down. Like, how do I teach someone? So this is the problem, in my opinion, with a lot of these guru furus, okay? They fucking, they're teaching shit, but they don't know what the fuck they're teaching. You can be the best trader in the world, but you're a horrible teacher if, if you can't articulate it. I mean, it, I mean, I, you know, I, let's say like I don't. I always say don't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter a hundred. You know, maybe I'm at level a thousand and you're at level fifty, right? So you have to be able to to teach someone and to understand. So that's why I try to simplify it down. Um, does it work? I mean. You you be the test. Does anything work? Nothing is 100% foolproof. Okay, okay, but it's a guideline, right? The system is a guideline. Uh, at the end of the day, it's risk management and all that stuff. So when 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 people laugh at all this stuff, I mean, just focus, guys. I I I, I blocked a lot of people because I don't I don't want them to to disturb us. But the end of the end of the day, it's like, dude, are you learning? Is it working? If it doesn't work, try something else. I'm not here to force you guys to join anything. I'm, I'm, I'm basically, in my opinion, giving back. I mean, I, I, I don't. I am here trying to help because I fucking see this, man. I, if I'm not here, you would be somewhere else getting ripped off, buying fucking five thousand dollar DVDs, paying money to meet some guy. That I mean, fuck, dude. How much are these guys? How much are these programs? Like eight thousand dollars? I'm like, holy fuck. I'm like, hundred seventy nine dollars, so cheap. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, it, $179, right? And people go, oh, Bao, you got money. Why are you doing it for free? Wait, fuck, dude. I mean, you, you have to have value in something. I'm not going to wake up and to be honest. Like, fuck, I did shit for free for 10 years, and I still got trolled. So I always say, hey, man, if, if I'm going to get trolled, I, I might as well pay. But I'm not ripping anybody off. $179 ain't ripping anybody off, right? You join in for one month, you don't like it, you leave. <laughs> Most people join. We have a 1,000 people now, so... Let me take a look. Let me show you. It was 1,001 people in after hours. So anybody wants to talk about testimonial, I mean, that's that's right there. Um, you guys are all smart. If it doesn't work, you guys will leave. And you'll tell your friends. It sucks. <laughs> but so who who's it? I see all the guys in MIC. Hey, guys. <laughs> How you guys like it? Does it work? Are you guys? Uh, is MIC? Uh, I mean, hundred seventy nine bucks. Good, right, guys? <laughs> um, I don't want. I don't want to turn this into a selling thing, but I mean, I really have passion for for what we do, guys. Um, and the fact that everyone's here, you know, says it. So I, I thank you. So today is actually a bittersweet day for me. It's like I should be a very happy day for me. It's like it. It, it, it basically is the. The culmination of an old life. I call that an old life. The life before MIC. Um, now the life after MIC. And the life after MIC has a lot more meaning to me. When, when it's all around money, it's, fucking, it's a lonely fucking existence, dude. You can never get anywhere. It's like if you make a million bucks, you want to make $10 million. You make $10 million, you want to make $100 million. There's just no stopping. That's why a lot of these guys... Become very jaded and 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 evil, very evil because they're competing with each other. They have so much money, and so you know what the billionaires do? They fight over who has the biggest yacht. I have a fucking hundred and eighty footer. Wow, one hundred eighty one foot. Oh fuck, that means I gotta put an order out in five years, get a hundred ninety footer. So you see these guys that fucking they don't even, they don't even use the boat. It's just their fucking extension of their penis. It makes me miserable. I mean, like, fuck it. When I think about it, it's like, you fuck, man. It's just stupid. Yeah, you can help so many people. Why are you buying a fucking boat that you that you take out one day? You know, that's just stupid shit like that. So my whole thing is, man, I want MIC to function without me. So that was the intent all along. Uh, I am not... I don't want to be the face of MIC. You guys are the face of MIC. And that's why I took a bunch of people and I personally try to help them to become consistently profitable. We, and now we have a ton of guys 
who started out not knowing much and now they're taking over MIC. And I'm fucking so happy. I'm so fucking glad that that, that happened, man. So I don't have to wake up one day. One day I'm not gonna be around. Um, for, for whatever reason, Alex will take over. Tosh will take over. You guys will take over. Because you guys learn this and that's it. And it's so simple, you guys learn this. The only thing that is missing is the ex experience, okay? Just because you learn this doesn't mean that you will apply it correctly because it's, you know, like anything else, it's situational, right, guys? You learn how to swing a bat or throw a ball, but then there's a curveball, there's a fastball, a slider, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, so my whole, my whole goal, guys, is to teach you guys so that you guys take over. So I, one day, I'm free. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, and then, you know, you teach the next generation. That's it. Not, 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 the thing is, not everybody's going to make it. Unfortunately, that's a fact of life. But at least you understand the – you have a fighting chance, man. You fucking have a fighting chance. I don't see it. these guys talking about resistance and support. As simple as that appear. I'm telling you now. They don't talk about it. Am I right, guys? You hear anybody talking about support and resistance as much as I do? No one. They assume you know this shit and they don't even think about it. But now I'm reinforcing in your brain that is how you should fucking trade. Of course, it's fundamentals and all that stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, these are the basic things you need. So I, what I did was, dude, trading is so big, man. It's so big. But I took components out that I feel are the, the major things that you need to learn. And from there, you can actually expand your library. Otherwise, you wouldn't know where to teach, right? I mean, where to go. So... So that's pretty much it, guys. I wanted to show you. I mean, I'm, I'm going to leave it to you to ask questions. I really don't want to talk about anything because I really don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't even know. Don't know as in like I don't know what to talk about because I don't want to sit here and brag about <laughs> my achievements. That's not the point. Uh, to me, I'm not even close, dude. This is a new era of my life, which is the MIC. It's not even a year yet. What I want to do is I want to be able to to get people to become like Alex, to become. Right now, um, Davin and James and a ton of people, man. Ton of people both learning. Tom, I saw Tom in there. I mean, they, they can attest, man. What, I mean, the bear. I mean, so basically, I want to get a bunch of people who's going to be freaking awesome. And, and that's, that's the thing, man. They're going to be so fucking awesome where, you know, it's like passing down your legacy. That, that's pretty much it. So. So let's let's talk about let's take some some questions, man. Who wants to uh, get on? Who wants to get on, guys? Just say who wants to get on, and then we'll bring you on. Hey, I'm gonna bring Marv on. Wait, wait, Marv, you were on last time, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, you're on last time already. Who wants to get on? Hey, Agent, Agent Forty Seven, my buddy. Maybe he's uh, doesn't have his makeup on yet. <laughs> AJ is a uh, you know very good trader in our room too. Um, he declined. Who else wants to get on, man? All right, Tom, I'm gonna bring you on, buddy. <laughs> Go put your clothes on, agent. <laughs> Yo, what's up, hey. man? What's up? How's things going, dude? I'm good. Let me put my headphones on. All right, so for the people that don't know who you are, Tom, tell them your name and your background. Yes, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Tom Nguyen. I have the same last name as Bob. Not related. <laughs> not, not related, but we look alike, yes. Uh, I'm from Where are you from? I'm from Europe, Prague, Czech Republic. Czech, wow. Yeah. You, you, you don't look European, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you too, man, you know. Okay. So how things How's going, going, man? Yeah, good, 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 bro. Um, I made some uh, good trades today. Uh, I think four trades uh, on uh, Soli. I went long and went short. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah. 
it's like um, I just using a small share since uh, I'm not so you know confident with that one because you know it's pretty hard to to train Tom, as Tom well. actually has a very inspirational, motivational story, man. That's why I want to bring Tom on. When I met Tom, <laughs> dude, I'm I'm telling you, your story is amazing, man. I mean, basically, it's like this is go. Ahead, I'll let you tell the story, man. This is um. I, I hope you don't mind sharing because it's no, very motivating, that's, man. That's fine. Yeah, um, I think most of you guys already heard my story on uh, on uh, MIC videos, uh, testimonials. Um, I started trading back in 2015, and you know, blew it all up. And I got started back, I think, on uh, October with MIC, with only 700 bucks. 700. And I, <laughs> I grow it. <laughs> You know, on that time I was making that video was like three thousand, and and now is that I'm almost like uh, you know over ten k now. But I'm just taking money out, you know, each month to support just, your family. Exactly, and that's what I'm all I'm doing right now. Yeah. And, so uh, I mean, when I met Tom, I mean he was he had a job, and then you know. Um, and so you were gambling, man, because you had a job, you know, right? <laughs> no, I had a job and my boss sacked me <laughs> because I was, you know, trading, doing, you know, working hours. <laughs> Got mad. <laughs> you know, he, he sacked me and then I had to find, you know, to, you know uh, another job uh, to work on. I also, you know, had to drive Uber as well during the night. And I mean, it's it's hard. It's hard, but you know, I started from seven hundred bucks to this point, and you know, I'm I'm just really you know proud of myself. Also, I'm and I'm also the reason because because in my opinion, this happens to me too, man. When when you think you reach rock bottom, you have no choice, right? Exactly. That's exactly. You can't fuck. He, yeah, I remember Tom t uh, talking to me. He goes, "Now I can't fuck up anymore." And he goes, "I can't fuck up anymore because this." You know what I'm saying? And so. Yeah, I, I, I've been there, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. But I think the main reason, if you know, you didn't uh, open MIC, I would have been, you know, working by now. You know, my my daily job, because I only, you know, uh, got back into trading is because of MIC, because I wanted to give a, you know, last try. That was like my last hundred, seven hundred bucks, you know. And after that point, I'm done because I blew up before like thirty thousand. I gave my everything and I blew it all up, you know. I I just don't want to name, you know, the service that I joined, but but you got the point. So <laughs> so let me ask you. So what did you learn? What what is the difference between blowing up and like what what made you now more disciplined? Than, what what did you do? Tell so share your story with people so that they they can be on your path. Okay, so uh, right before I joined MIC, they have you know all kinds of video. And I had to watch those, you know, every day, every single day, I, which just went over and over and over again. And uh, I, I did kind of learn from you, your mindset and uh, what to do before markets open, you know, because, uh, you know, when I, I, I said to myself, I just cannot, you know, sit there, you know, like uh, at the 9 a.m. in the morning and just, you know, trade. It, it, it just that doesn't work that way, you know. You need to put, put um, you know, the work on. You, know, you, need, you need to work hard, you know, in able to achieve something. You know, that's my mentality. So, uh, so I, I was digging more into uh, MIC, and I found that, you know, the pros, you and Alex, what you guys did, you know, every morning. Alex was up, like, I mean, 4 or 5 a.m. It's like three or four hours yeah, he's, preparing he's for that day. Correct. So that's and different, right? Before you would yeah. just get on and then just start gambling. Yeah, just just hitting hot keys. And I, that, at that point, you know, I I had to 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 know uh, to um, actually um, you know, f find how to you know set up my hot keys so I could you know do that <laughs> faster. But that's not the point. So right? you can lose money faster. Yeah, hot exactly. keys is the way to lose money faster. That's what I call it. Yeah. So you no, so, but, now, uh, so now you know the process. That that's the whole key, right? So is it the yeah. process, the planning? The process, I think, is the most important one, and uh, and uh, you know how to uh, understand fundamentals, uh, technicals, also and, you know reading news uh, and all kinds of, of stuff that you guys you know talking about on, in a, in MIC. So and also your strategy as well, you know. So a typical day. So walk 
walk the viewers through like a typical day, like your process. What what do you do? You wake up and then. Okay, so my typical day, right? Since I'm I'm in Europe, my time zone is a little bit different. So I'm up super early compared to you guys. Since it's nine a.m. here, is I think three a.m. in 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 Europe. So I had you know a lot of time. I had to uh, to put on a watch list. So I usually have a watch list that uh, you know that uh, the stocks that ran before the day before. I I put that on. You know you know I went over news, uh, fundamentals, uh, you know floats, uh, rotation, and on you know all kinds of things. I went to the chart, went over a chart from the previous day, see the major you know support and resistance, and I. Just uh, basically, uh, you know, build a plan on that, and when it opens, it hits my certain levels. I'm gonna get in. If not, I'm just gonna avoid it. That's all. So, what kind of stocks are you trading? You are only trading what we call the low-hanging fruit now. Uh, I'm, I'm actually expanding now a little bit. Oh, uh, <laughs> since <laughs> since, uh, since it's quite working for me, and I try to expand my book, uh, you know, to little bit advanced but I'm that's why today I went long on solely that's the first time I went long like in in ages man wow. and I I but then uh, you know I just went with you know 100 shares but I made 200 bucks on that so that's that's great yeah so so, so tell the people $200 how, how far, what is that in in your country check is that what is average salary for someone okay bro to be honest i was making one thousand five hundred dollars a month how many working, days yeah just normal from monday to friday eight hours a day so uh, 1500 you know divided by i don't know 22 or so something. that's like 75 bucks a day or uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure i'm, I'm not a math genius but, but it's less <laughs> but so but it's small. It's it's really small. But wow. if if I can, you know, make two hundred a day every day, that's you know that kind that's of big. money is a game changer for me, and, and you know it's game changing for me. And yeah. you know, two hundred two hundred two hundred dollars a day. If you make if you made that, it's forty thousand a year. That's exactly that's, that's pretty and, big. <laughs> and that's what's you know my goal. Uh, you know when when I started, but. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had a really small account. So, uh, you know, I think I traded for like a month or two, only like 100 and 200 shares. That's it. But you and, have to start somewhere. That's the thing. Then you became consistent, right? And it added up very exactly. fast. Exactly. And on, on that month, on uh, October, it was all green. And then November, I had like, only two red days. But those two red, uh, red days, you know, wipe out everything. Yes. That's and I, I, I said to myself, what the heck am I doing here? You know, I'm, I'm good with this. And then, you know, one day I just wipe out everything. It's just, you know, it just doesn't make sense. You know, I question my, you know, uh, uh, my knowledge, my question, everything, you know, if this is working for me or not, you know, but it's just that one day that you breaking rules. You know, it's going to wipe out everything. Dude, that, I made a lot of videos on that, and I'm telling you, that's the hardest yeah. thing to overcome. To, because yeah. you meant it's a mental part. You just like go go crazy, and then right. So yeah, how, exactly. So how do you solve that now? What yeah, do you and do? after that, right after I, I think I lost on that. I post on Twitter as well. I think eight hundred day, and you know, it was eight hundred dollars. Uh, you know, on that day, which wipe out, you know, almost two weeks of game and uh, so I said oops Yeah, man. Uh, Instagram cuts it off at one hour. So this is part two.